Section 9 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross The Most Holy Trinity and The Communication of the Three Persons The Most Holy Trinity In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, in whom he possessed bliss everlasting. The Word was God. He is the beginning. He was in the beginning and never began. He was the beginning itself and therefore had none. The Word is the Son, from the beginning born. He has begotten forever and is forever begetting. He gives him of his substance forever and has it forever himself. And thus the glory of the Son is that he hath in the Father and all his glory the Father hath in the Son. As the lover with his love, each in the other living, so this love which both unites is one in both. In dignity and might, co-equal with them both, three persons and one love, the three are one. And in the three one love, one lover makes of all, the lover is the love in whom each doth live. The being which the three possess, each by himself possesses, and of the three each loves the other, in that he hath this being. This being is each one, and alone makes them one, in a way ineffable, beyond the reach of words. And so that love which makes them one is infinite itself, for one love makes the one the three, and is their being as well. And that love, the more it makes them one, the more it is their love. The Communication of the Three Persons In the love of both proceeding, it hath limits none. Words of gladness spoke the Father to his only Son. Words they were of joy profoundest, understood of none, but of him exulting in them, whose they were the Son. Of these words of gladness, only this was heard by me, not my Son can give me pleasure when I have not thee. But if aught should give me pleasure that I seek in thee, he who gives to thee most pleasure gives it most to me. He who thee in naught resembleth cannot be like me. Life of life, my whole rejoicing, is alone in thee. Thou art my eternal wisdom, thou light of my light. In thee, figure of my substance, is my whole delight. Thee, my son, he who loveth shall have love of me, and the love wherewith I love him is my love of thee. So great then is my love of thee, that he who loveth thee shall be also loved by me. End of section 9. Section 10 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross The Creation O my son, I long to give thee in my love a loving bride who shall by thy goodness merit with us ever to abide, who shall at the heavenly banquet, eating of my bread with me, learn to know the wondrous treasure that I have, my Son, in thee, and that in thy grace and beauty, as a glory round her shed, she with me may joy forever. Then the Son gave thanks and said, On the bride which thou wilt give me, I my brightness will bestow, so that she my Father's goodness in its light may love and know, learning also how my being from his being doth overflow. With my arms I will embrace her, and thy love shall be her light, so forever shall thy goodness be exalted with delight. The Same Subject for the merits of thy love, then, be it done, the Father said. In the word the Father uttered, 
all created things were made. In the everlasting wisdom rose the palace of the bride, which, two substances created, in a twofold form divide. With varieties unnumbered was the lower part arrayed, while the higher glowed in beauty with the wondrous gems displayed. That the bride might know the bridegroom who her heavenly nuptials graced, the angelic hosts in order in the higher part were placed. Man was placed, his nature lower, in the lower part on earth, being fashioned of a substance which was of inferior worth. And although both place and nature God in this way did divide, yet the two are both together, but one body of the bride. And the two, although divided, are one bride in his one love, who in gladness as the bridegroom is possessed by those above. Those below in hope are living of the faith that he has given, for one day he will exalt them, he hath said so unto heaven. For of those of base condition he will take away the shame, and exalt them, so that nothing shall remain to them a blame. He in all things with their likeness will himself one day invest. He will come and dwell among them as his own elected rest. God himself will be incarnate. God will have a human birth. Eating he will come and drinking and converse with men on earth. He will dwell himself among them and continually stay till the final consummation when the ages melt away. Then shall both rejoice together in the endless life of bliss, for to him belongs the headship of the bride, and she is his. He shall bring the just together, naught shall them from her divide, for they are the living members of the body of the bride. He will tenderly embrace her, he will give her of his love, and, united with him, take her to his Father's home above. Into joy shall she then enter, God no greater joy can give, when absorbed in him forever, she the life of God shall live. So the Father, Son, and Spirit, three in one and one in three, live each living in the other, the most blessed Trinity. End of section 10. Section 11 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross, The Desires of the Holy Fathers. When the ancient saints were waiting, hope came down to their relief, and made lighter by its presence the sore pressure of their grief. But still, hope deferred, together with the longing which they had to behold the blessed bridegroom, made them sick at heart and sad. Pouring forth their supplications, in their misery they lay, sighing, weeping, and lamenting, with strong crying night and day. That he would the times determine, and among them come and stay. Oh, that I, so one entreated, might rejoice to see his day. Hasten then thy work and finish. Send him, Lord, whom thou wilt send, was the cry of one another's. Oh, that he the heavens would rend that I might behold his coming, and my wail be turned to mirth, let the clouds rain down the just one, so long desired on the earth. Let the earth which brought forth briars now break forth, and in their room let it bear the sacred flower which shall ever on it bloom. Others also, oh how blessed shall that generation be, which shall merit in time coming God's most holy face to see. Men shall throng around and touch him, they shall in his sight remain, in the sacraments rejoicing, he himself shall then ordain. The Same Subject These and other supplications, as the centuries rolled by, men poured forth with greater fervor as the promised time drew nigh. Aged Simeon in the furnace of his longing burning lay, praying God that he would grant him of his grace to see that day. And the ever-blessed Spirit condescended to his cry, 
and consoled him with the promise that the old man should not die till he saw the ever-living God descending from above, took him in his arms and held him, and embraced him in his love. End section 11. Section 12 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross The Incarnation and The Nativity The Incarnation In the fullness of the ages Now had come the holy tide For the payment of the ransom Of the long expectant bride Groaning in the house of bondage Underneath the legal yoke of the precepts given by Moses, when these words the Father spoke. I, my son, have in thy likeness and thy image made thy bride, and in that resemblance worthy to be ever at thy side. But in one respect unlike thee, for her nature is not thine. She is flesh, her nature human, while thy nature is divine. Perfect love demands a likeness, in the lovers it unites, for the most complete resemblance most aboundeth in delights. Now the love and exultation of the bride would greatly grow if she saw thee in her likeness in the flesh on earth below. Then the Son the Father answered, Lo, my will is ever thine, and my glory which I cherish is that thine is also mine. I am ready at thy bidding, for thy will is my delight, to make known at once thy goodness and thy wisdom and thy might. I will manifest thy justice and proclaim throughout the earth thy supremacy and beauty and the sweetness of thy worth. I will go and seek my bride then, and upon myself will take all the poverty and sorrows she now suffers for my sake, and that I true love may give her, I will give for her my own. So shall I present her rescue from the pit before thy throne. The Same Subject God then summoned the archangel, holy Gabriel, him he sent, to the blessed Virgin Mary to obtain the maid's consent. She consented. In that instant the mysterious work was done and the Trinity a body, wrought and fashioned for the Son. In this wondrous operation, though the sacred three concurred, he who in the womb of Mary was incarnate is the Word. He who had a father only had a mother also then, and it was in other fashion than the manner is of men. In the womb of holy Mary, he his flesh did then receive, so the Son of God Most Highest, we, the Son of Man, believe. The Nativity Now at last the destined ages their appointed course had run, when rejoicing from his chamber issued forth the Bridegroom's Son. He embraced his bride and held her lovingly upon his breast, and the gracious mother laid him in the manger down to rest. There he lay, the dumb beasts by him, they were fitly stabled there, while the shepherds and the angels filled with melody the air. So the feast of their espousals with solemnity was kept, but Almighty God, an infant, in the manger moaned and wept. So the bride at her betrothal did the bridal gifts arrange, but the mother looked in wonder at the marvelous exchange. Man gave forth a song of gladness, God himself a plaintive moan, both possessing that which never had been hitherto their own. End of section 12